Okay, hopefully you never have to hear the sound of sirens because of anything that happens in your DT lessons. But that was my most serious sounding voice, health and safety. Because health and safety in DT really is a serious matter. Before you start making any DT project, you need to know the rules that you've got to follow in order to keep you and all those around you safe. I love the making stage of design technology, but I always make sure I follow the correct rules for whatever I am doing, whether it be making a project with resistant materials like woods, metals or plastics, doing textiles, cooking or electronics. They all have safety rules. Hmm... So, what to start with? Hmm. Ah, I know. Let's think about the room. So, the first thing you need to do before you start making is check that you have a tidy work area. Your table should be clear and the floor around you should be clear of bags, coats, books, papers, wires, anything really. Oh, and spillages. There shouldn't be anything around that you could trip over as you move about especially if you're going to be carrying sharp tools. You could easily slip and hurt yourself. Next, depending on what you are making, you might need to put your chair away, maybe stacked out of the way to the side of the room. You don't want to be sat down while using certain tools, like woodwork tools. One slip of a saw or drill and you could end up hurting your leg and that would not be good. Once you've got the room in order, you need to get yourself ready. So let's run through what's needed. Sleeves. These should be rolled up, especially if you have long flappy sleeves. Hair. If it's long, it should be tied back. And if it's really long, make sure you keep it behind you and not dangling down to one side. It could still get caught in equipment at the side of you. Shoes. Open toed shoes such as sandals, can be so dangerous. Imagine if you dropped a hammer on them. Oh, wear wear closed-toed shoes. Try saying that. Wear closed-toed shoes to keep them lovely and safe. Finally, wear an apron to protect your clothes and stop them flapping about. And wear goggles or safety glasses to protect your eyes. You never know when a small bit of material might come loose and fly up into the air. Looking great! Right, work area? Tick. What you need to wear? Tick. Now for the rest of the rules. Let's make sure there's an adult in the room while doing practical work. If you are ever unsure of any part of the project, ask your adult what to do, especially at each new stage of the making. Do not interfere with other people while they are working. You could easily cause them to have an accident. It only takes a quick, hiya, how are you doing? They look up and oh my goodness, they carry on cutting and that is not good. Walk around your making area. Do not run, especially with tools out. Be careful with hot tools such as glue guns and ovens and be sure to turn them off when you're finished with them. Keep your workplace tidy so you can see where any tools are and help keep things in order. Hold work in a vice rather than holding with your hands where possible. It's very easy to slip when using tools. Oh, and always cut or work away from your body, including your hands. Always tell an adult straight away if you have an accident or breakage. Even adults have accidents, so never be embarrassed. Always say if you have. And never put a broken blade or anything else sharp in the bin. Let your adult know and then it should be wrapped in paper and taped up 
to keep other people safe when they are near the bin. If you are asked to stop, or when you're ready to stop, place all tools down on the table away from the edges. Try and put them in the middle of the table so they can't easily be knocked off as people walk by. Finally, always take your time. Rushing is likely to lead to a mistake or an accident. Oh, I nearly forgot. Never blow dust. When you're tidying up, it's really important not to blow the dust. Don't use your hands either because at the end you brush them and the dust flies up and goes everywhere and you breathe it in and that's so bad for you. So instead, use a little dustbin and brush, sweep it up and put it in and then it doesn't matter if you brush your hands. There are a lot of rules but don't worry, you will naturally do many of them and your adult will always be nearby to help. So let's see all the rules. Pause if you want to have a really good look at these. There are a few rules that are specific for just textiles, food tech, cooking and electronics. But these ones are the general ones to keep in mind at all times. There are some tools, pieces of equipment and making that as you are introduced to them, you will need to learn how to use them safely. DT Roundup! Look at this picture. Can you list as many things as possible that are dangerous? Grab a pen or pencil and a piece of paper to either write or draw as many as you can. Press pause and have a go. Press play when you want to see what they all are. How did you do? Did you get them all? I hope so. One last mini challenge to help you check your dress safely each time you start to make. Can you create a song? Here's mine. Do you have long hair? Is it all tied up? Are your clothes all flappy? Are your sleeves rolled up? Have you got shoes on? Can I see your toes? Aprons and goggles on, now you're ready to go. Ooh, I need to work on the backing track. If you do make your own version for a safety song, rhyme or poem, I'd love to hear it. Maybe leave the words in the comments below or put them on my Facebook page over at Happy DTing. Oh, or maybe you could make your own safety poster for your making area. I'd love to hear, read or see what you come up with. Well, that's all for now. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Happy DTing! Funky, funky, yeah.